Well, let's get let's get back down yeah. to business here. Today we're talking about our industrial line of uh, fans. Um, it's getting hot outside. Summer's approaching. Now is the time to start this conversation plan with the ahead. customers. That's yeah, right. Plan a little bit ahead. As we have we as we've seen and learned that when the, you know if the product is on the shelf, a customer sees it, it's an impulse buy. They're gonna, uh, while you might be thinking a fan is just a fan, King's 60 plus years of experience designing and manufacturing air moving products has really taught us that not all fans are the same. And you might see lower priced product out there. There are a lot of lower priced products, and they're very cheap and inexpensive, and they aren't, are not the quality that we can provide. Yeah, they're intended for general purpose, and they're available in the market, and they look very similar, but there are major differences between how they're made and how they perform and how it compares against our products. The main difference is really comes down to being driven by cost. So they'll use lower priced motors, the sheet metal's thinner. And I think you mentioned that a lot of times they're used for one season. and Yeah, yeah a lot of times they work one season, they're dead. So uh, these are made to last for a few years. So yep. you made it how hard you beat on them. So unlike those, those are used in homes and light-duty applications. When we were designing our product line, we'd focused on the quality of the components and the durability of all the construction. So we chose the materials and the components and the construction methods that really will stand, the, stand up to the test of time and they're top of the class. The industrial-grade fans, they're used for ventilation, air circulation, and dry-out applications. What kind of dry-out applications are we talking about? Construction where you've got sheetrock that's drying and paint and all that stuff where you just need to get lots of air into a building. And air does a great job of dehumidifying in a job site. And they're also used frequently for water mitigation. If there's a, a water leak, they'll just to get airflow and circulation. So they're used in facilities for various reasons, warehouses, shops, and other commercial environments. And because they're designed for their ruggedness and durability, they last a long time and can be used for many seasons. Yep, going from job site to job site, and it's got all that protection on it and the handles and everything. So yeah, better great. quality, long life motors. We put welding at the seams, so they're very durable. The, the sheet metal is going to stay together. Heavy gauge steel, metal construction, the grill. I think you had said you were impressed with. Yeah, the spacing is really tight on these, so that keeps the... Uh Keeps all the debris and fingers out of there. Yep. You're not always comparing apples to apples when you say, hey, we're quoting against a 30-inch pedestal fan. You want to make sure that those specs line up so that you can justify what you're trying to sell. Just to clarify a bit, the direct drive, the fan blade's connected directly to the fan. Yeah. So you don't have any, any moving parts I mean, that, that you have to maintain. Right. Whereas, you don't have to adjust a belt or anything. So, so that, that is a direct drive. It's maintenance-free. So the belt drive, the, the, the motor is actually offset from the fan blade, and there's a, a, almost like a, a serpentine belt in a car yep. that might have to be adjusted once a year or so yep. to make sure it's in the right tolerance. Probably once a year you may have to tighten that up. <laughs> All right, so that's the drum fan, and then you go up to the pedestal fan, and the advantage of that is it can be moved around and, and it's raised up higher, um, so you can really direct it, and it's out of the way a bit. Yep, uh, you can cover multiple people at the same time, say on a, a assembly line or something. Okay, you, and then and they're then, sharing a fan. And the similar principle on the wall wall mounted fan, but that gets mounted high up on the wall as well. Yeah. And, and one thing I wanted to, it's important to note, is that on both the pedestal fan and the wall fans is they're rated for wet locations. So uh, it's all totally enclosed, gasketed, and it can be left out in the rain, and it's not going to damage the product. And they both have an os that oscillating feature you mentioned, yep. which is nice. Not all pedestal and wall fans will oscillate. So you have the, the ability to do it fixed on one location, or it can oscillate 180 degrees. You mentioned fan bl the number of fan blades. Tell us again a little bit more so about the, that. So the direct drive is only three fan blades and low pitch where when you gain, they, when you double the torque of that motor with a belt drive, now you've got four fan blades and steep pitch. So uh, you've got a lot of air movement and, and push on that. So that's one way to clue you in if you're talking about a belt drive or a direct drive is the number of fan blades. Yeah. Uh, more fan blades typically would be a, a belt drive. Belt and you can get unit. really good compression putting it in a doorway the belt-driven unit should really be able to push and drive the Yeah, I remember area. you set one out here in the building, and you were able to... We sucked pretty much everything out in the parking lot in the, <laughs> pretty quickly, under the carpet. Yeah. Let's say you don't want full power. We These are available with multiple speeds, typically high and low. Yeah. 
And so you can control that. We also have, this is a new accessory that we're working on. It's a variable speed controller. Yeah, motor the, speed control. Yep. So these fans, you know, they're, they're 120 volts, so they plug into typical and standard outlets. So you would plug this into an outlet, the fan plugs into the bottom, and then you can just dial it up and down to the speed you want. So what's the difference between an open type motor and a totally enclosed motor? Yeah, so the totally enclosed motor is going to be totally enclosed. Rain can't get in or anything where the open coil motor is going to be open and it shouldn't be out in the rain because you may do damage getting rain and stuff into it but so we do have this accessory that we've added to the line it's a fan cover you may ask why do i need that well they are rated for wet locations but if you're going to leave them outside in the rain for months on end for an entire season always recommended to protect them with a cover these are nice they're heavy gauge pu material they have a zipper on the back that can fit over a cover the whole motor and fan blade assembly cord length yeah that's an important feature. Nine feet. Whoa. That's incredible. I haven't seen a nine-foot cord in a long time. <laughs> Another indicator of quality is weight. Weight. The weight is heavy of these. These are hard to carry around, but they, they got the wheels on them. You can wheel them around anywhere you want. And the pedestal yeah. fans are will not move. Yeah. So the weight, yeah. So um, seriously, though, if you're comparing it to the, to yep. the competition, you want to make sure you look at that as a critical indicator. Weight equals quality. Yep. Materials are better, the heavier duty. You can see behind us on, on a couple of these fans, they have the wheels on the, on the drum fans. Uh, depending on the size, the wheels get much larger. We talked about the swivel option. Um, That's a nice feature because, I mean, if you're, you're sheetrocking and painting ceilings and stuff, to be able to drive that air up and across the ceiling is really important. How do you properly use these fans to exchange air in a building? Like a pedestal fan, a drum fan down low, and a pedestal fan uh, up high, and you can drive that cool air in and bring that hot air back out. Almost creating a vortex yeah. of a circular a pattern. Direction, a direction, at least a direction. So the, the best way to do it is if you have uh, cross ventilation, so you actually have the windows on the opposite side of, as the door. This is just a diagram showing that, but it's the same principles regardless of the space. Yeah, very basic. And really use the fans to cool, uh, cool the space. Brad, do you want to talk about the misting feature? You we know, I love the misting feature because it is a, an add-on, and it has these fine little brass uh, little sprayers on here. And, it, and they're easy to clean out. You can just unscrew them and take them out if you get uh, debris in them. And then it just hooks up to a standard uh, hose. And, and then you can just hose. adjust how much misting you want there, more or less. And uh, just a small amount of misting can do a really great job for you. So it just attaches, just snaps on to the existing uh, fan there. Or onto the screen. Yep. So they work with either of our outdoor rated fans. Easy to uh, attach and assemble, as, as Brad mentioned. Um, very cool product. Very popular for restaurants and outdoor events. The technology behind it, when you introduce water, it, um, it starts to evaporate on the evaporative skin. Evaporative cooling, yes. It's a very fine mist, and it's just evaporative cooling. And, just... and you really, it's like... 10 degrees 20 15 yeah. degrees cooler it feels when you introduce that so 